morning, everyone. Happy Wednesday. Hope everyone's doing well. Um, oh, I didn't clean my windshield one second. Gotta get a car wash today. Um, <clears throat> where I work, the uh, where our office is in the direct flight path of the airport, so all the airplanes um, fly over us, and they have uh, their jet fuel sometimes hits the car. So it makes these ugly yellow spots on the windshield. So anyway, um, <clears throat> so today I'm going to talk about value. Um, I talked about it yesterday and the day before. I actually uploaded the video this morning, but I think I can do it a little better. <laughs> so I'll do it a little better. <clears throat> um, so value. One cannot recognize their value if they do not know their worth. A worth has to be established before you can determine what the value is. Um, and, but the thing is, we see this from two different perspectives. Um, or I should say we can see this from two different perspectives. One perspective is God's perspective, uh, which is really the only perspective. But being as we have free will to create an alternative perspective, many alternative perspectives... Uh, we we do that. We actually take advantage of that free will choice and we create something completely different than what, uh, what really is, you know? So there is an absolute view of what your value is and an absolute view of what your worth is, uh, but we have to see it from that perspective in order to get the fullness of it. In order to understand your full value, you have to understand your full worth. Like, you're worth something, now use it, and, and make it valuable to someone, to you, to others. So if someone doesn't know someone's worth, they can't get the value of what is, uh, what is uh, of great worth. So, you know, if someone said, um, I think it was a CEO, I can't remember in an email or she said it in a, in a speech in one of our meetings, but um, she said she's looking for, for, for value, people who are able to contribute and and produce a value to the agency um, but the thing is this is all subjective because if it's not from the perspective of the creator then there really isn't any value however we may see it as value as valuable and the thing is depending on our state our emotional state our, our soul condition we may see things as valuable that are actually destructive and Everything that we see as valuable or has or that has value and it's not from God's perspective, it's going to be destructive because it's coming from an unloving place. Because God never comes from any other place than a loving place. So, for instance, someone may value that you're there when you when you when they need you. So when they're in distress and you're always there to pick up the phone and you drop everything that you're doing when you discard your own life when you uh, put aside your own desires and your own dreams someone will see that as great value because they're not looking at what you're giving up they're looking at what they're getting and that's what they're getting is what they perceive to be valuable so this is why it's important to understand uh, the distinction between God's view of what's value and the, the everyone else and their perspective as to or their perspective and perception of what is valuable so you know it is it is very difficult to get to that place if you don't know that you're worth something because something that is worthless has no value and most people believe that they are worthless on so many different levels and so many different subjects and so many different areas some people feel like they're a worthless mom so therefore they do not exude any value. They do not even feel as if they have value. And if it gets too deep and too strong, if that is such a belief that is held deeply and strongly, then those, the, the people around them and their family will also suffer. So a mother who, or a father who feels, and it can go both ways, a mother can feel like they, they're not, they, they're worthless, Someone can be in a great depression 
and feel that they're not contributing enough or they don't know how to contribute or they don't feel that they are contributing to their family, they will feel as if they are worthless and therefore they will feel as if they don't have any value. And the same thing with the father. A father could be unemployed trying to find work and they're, and they're seeing that their family is struggling and the family is dependent upon them. So they may feel as if they don't have, they don't, um, they're not worthy of anything. That they feel they have a sense of worthlessness. Therefore, he will not be able to see any value in himself. And the issue with this is once you get into the cycle, once you get into this pattern of constantly believing that you're worthless, how you approach things also changes in order to sustain the feeling of worthlessness and lack of value. This is what happens. This is what depression is. They fall into this place where they don't feel they fit in anywhere. They can't contribute. This is why people want to do, 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 do. Because it ma a lot of what people do in terms of working and career, all these things are masks. Masks of what or for what? To cover the inadequacy that they feel within them on a true soul level. So they may feel worthless and, and, and not hold any value from their childhood. These may be the feelings that are stirring around and within their soul. Which is why they have to do things, work so hard in order to get the praise from someone. Because that is the pseudo feeling of worthiness and value. As long as someone continually tells me that I'm worthy and that I'm valuable and that I'm good. Then I feel better in that moment. But those moments, they, they fade away. And the reason why they fade away is because it's not sustained by love. It's not sustained by truth. It's sustained by a facade. Now, now, someone may not feel the way you do because they feel good about themselves. And they may truly recognize you for your work that you do because your work is contributing to a cause. It could be any cause. Their cause. It could be that... Uh, they want to make you feel good so that you perform better, so that they look better. So it looks like they have a strong team. But understanding this is so important. It's, it's I, you know, I don't know how I even did it in the past when I didn't know this stuff. Like, what was I doing? Like, wandering aimlessly. I had to be, I had to be wandering aimlessly <laughs> because... And I understand it. That's why, you know, when I talk about these things, like, I've experienced most of the things that I'm talking about. Most everything that I'm talking about, I've experienced on some level or another. Which is why I can talk about it so freely and easily. Which is why I can recall these things. Which is why I can make so much sense of it. But when you don't understand it, you're, you're living in it. And it's just the way of life. It's just the way you function. And... If you've never been in a different place, you won't know any difference. You won't know that there's something better. You, you won't know that there's a better way of life. There's a way, better way of experiencing life. You just won't know. Because that which you don't know, you don't feel you, you're losing out on. It's not, only, it's not until you realize that there's something more to be had that you feel like you're missing out on something. <clears throat> so going back to this value of worth... Um, If you have been raised not feeling or feeling or being told or being made to feel as if you're worthless and that you don't have any value, if this is what has happened to you, you it, the thing is if this has happened to you, the same, it's like this, if man imposed that feeling upon you, you're going to seek man to reverse that because that's because you were naive enough to accept it from man's perspective which means you didn't know anything else other than that so this means you did not know God's perspective you did not know God's view of worthiness and value this is clear this is fact you did not know this because had you known this you would have never accepted the unloving lie that was told to you or the feeling of worth it, worthlessness that was imposed upon you. You would have never accepted this. So some people could say, well, no, that's not. Look, just look at the facts, people. Just the facts, ma'am. <laughs> just look at the facts. Look at your life. Look at your experience. I've said it before. 
the things that I say, you can tell if they're true or not, if it's the truth, if you look at your life. But if you are in complete denial of your life and the events that have happened in it and the feelings that come from it, you won't be able to see it. You have to be able to look at yourself, be humble enough to look at yourself and say, hey, look, Zach's saying this, you know, this man's saying this, I don't know this man, but this is what he's saying. Let me take a step back. Let me look at my life and see if what he is saying is true. Did I experience these things? Did I see it from that perspective? Am I able to see it from that perspective now looking back on my life? Because your life is your proof. The law of attraction has been responding you to you since conception. Since conception, the law of attraction has been responding to you. This is why children come out deformed. This is why children come out with learning disabilities, missing limbs, some kind of defect. Because the law of attraction was responding to that soul at conception. Not before conception, at conception. The soul was perfect before incarnation, but as soon as it incarnated, it started to absorb the emotions of the mother and the father. And understand that the emotions of the mother and the father carry emotions from all of their ancestors dating back or going all the way back to Adam and Eve or Amen and Amon. And those emotions that were released are no longer there. But the ones that are there that are hindering the soul's progression are present at conception. And the, and the universe responds to that in its development. Its physical experience is being determined at conception. So at conception, the universe is responding to the degradation that is within the soul that was transferred from the mother and the father to the child. Now the child is not developing correctly, it's developing incorrectly. The DNA and the RNA are all jacked up because the DNA and the RNA from the parents are present. And that's coming from the emotions. So all of these things are present and the universe is responding from day one. Day one. <laughs> okay, day one, people. It's not something that happens at five years old or seven years old. No. It happens at conception and proof is in how the baby develops. How the fetus is developing, I should say. The soul's fetus, the soul's vessel that it's going to use on this planet is being affected from day one. This is something that has to be understood because if you understand this, then you now have an understanding that this entire time you've been affected. Even when you were completely clueless about being affected. Before you were even aware of the law of attraction, you were being affected by the law of attraction. That's it. So when we look at something like this, hold on a sec. Okay, I'm back. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Uh, so, I know for you it was like just a flip. But anyway, um, as I was saying, it starts from conception. And what the benefit of that is from conception, or I should say, yeah, from the point of conception, the law of attraction has been responding to you, creating lessons. <clears throat> Every experience is a lesson. A lesson in what? A lesson in what degradation looks like. So your life is a history. It is a, a, a life of lesson for you to look back on when you are ready. This is why history is so important because it shows what, what has been up until this point. Where are we? Look at our history. Are we, are we in a different place? Yesterday, well actually yesterday's video was this video, but <laughs> same topic. But um, I had mentioned that when we look at like ourselves today and we look at say the medieval times, we are really no different today than we were as human beings back then. We're still barbaric. You can turn on the news and see that. You can see people fighting over the smallest of things. Heck, you can see it even more on YouTube. People fighting over the silliest of things. But they're not silly to them. But if we were look at a, if we were to look at some kind of medieval time barbaric movie, we would look at it and say that's ridiculous. But yet we do the same things today. 
The only thing different is we have different products, different physical items that we have. There is more of it. So maybe, you know, people, you know, whatever they used to make back then in the day. I don't know what the hell they used to make. Baskets, weaving, and iron, and, you know, iron. What, is, what do they call that? Iron work? I forget what they call it. Um, I, don't, I think they call them blacksmiths or something like that. So anyway, you know, looking back on history, we can we can look at it and ask and truly ask ourselves, are we different? Have we really progressed? Yes, we put in we put laws in place, and these laws are in place, and the thing is laws have consequences, meaning there's punishment at the other end of it. There's punishment at the end of it, which is why most people obey. We even we even uh, place that upon God in the Bible. If you don't act right, you're going to be punished. If you don't act right, you're going to be punished. Hello. <clears throat> it's the same thing. We haven't changed, but we we've, we've been able to fool ourselves into thinking that we have. And on some level, on some level, we we have learned to do things differently. So instead of um, beating up somebody for creating a, a, a faulty product, we go to customer service. <laughs> you know, we I want to talk to your manager. It's different. You don't threaten the you know the man or the the woman who created something and, it, and it's not working. You know, oh, you sold me these chickens, but this chicken doesn't lay any eggs. I'm going to cut your throat out. Blah, blah, blah. You know? How would you like it if, you know, I sold you something? Blah, blah. You just, we don't do that anymore. Yet, some people do that still. If you don't believe me, <laughs> turn on the people's court. <laughs> turn on the people's court, and you'll see that they got in a brawl before they got to the court. <laughs> We're no different people. But you can look at your history. Look at our history. It's our history. It's my history too. It's my history. And so I look at I look back on things like that. And I'm like, have we changed? Have we really changed? You know, back when laws were first being developed and they weren't as extensive as they are now, uh the people who we made found them, a faster route via California one ten, which saves three minutes. If you prefer to stay on the current route, tap no thanks. I oh, can't tap anything at this point, but thank you so much. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, I was thinking back, like, not too long ago, you know, when the laws were, you know, basically being in, uh, put in place. Uh, the laws were being put in place by the well-to-do. And the, the, the well-to-do were okay with those laws because they were creating the laws. And it been, usually the laws benefited the well-to-do. It didn't benefit the poor people. You know, it didn't benefit the people who didn't have anything. Uh, so, when we look at the laws, it's, it's like I said, it's easy for people, for the well-to-do, for the people who have to abide by the laws. Um, but every now and again, you get someone who who came up, you know, through the trenches and they... They try to do things that the law says they can't do. They end up getting caught. But the laws that we have, we're starting to see more and more that people are violating laws. I don't know if you have noticed it, but more and more people are violating the laws. And that's supposed to happen. It's, it's part of, it is part of God's plan uh, because... Law, the laws that we make are not the absolute laws. God's laws are absolute. And so God has to... Um, and it's not, not God doing it, but it's just the way God set up the system that allows what is happening to happen. Because at some point, we have to understand, we have to come to know and understand that the laws that are made today are not going to change a person's condition of love their behavior it's just behavior modification you know like I said I don't know if I mentioned the last video or the other video but the guy that I was talking to who got into organizational psychology we were talking about you know what psychology is and it's basically behavior modification 
um, it's not understanding the root of it and so if you don't understand the root of it then your soul condition isn't changing and God's plan God's um, desire is for the soul to change so the soul can have a better experience because at this point most people on the planet look at all these cars in front of me most people on their way to work right now do not know about the soul the soul condition the love within it and how their life is going to change only if they change their soul condition so yes the person I just passed has a Mercedes a, a S class Mercedes so they have money and they believe that they have arrived and this is this is man's false definition of happiness they think hey if I have the car I have the house what is it 2.5 children I never got that but whatever <laughs> 2.5 children um, you know that's you and you have a decent career maybe you have a position of authority or power like that's the life you 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 have arrived but for most once you reach that place it's like the truth of your soul sets in it's like okay I have all this stuff but I'm not happy I'm not happy in my marriage my kids are out doing whatever I can't I can't I don't know what to do there you know I give them things that they want I buy them everything that they need I still don't have any control and that's that's the soul being exposed to itself the, the Creator always exposes our truth to us no matter what we do the truth of our being is always reflected back to us that is the the, the nature or the, the that is the goal and the purpose of the universe to reflect back to us our soul condition that's why we are the pinnacle of the Creator's creation we are the most important thing and everything around us is showing us who we are nature these dead trees these half dead trees these trees that have half leaves and have half bald <laughs> that is a condition of the soul that's what that is wherever you see people understand this wherever you see people destruction is present wherever you see people destruction is present where things are left alone everything's fine everything's fine there's nothing to affect it because there's no soul present to use nature as a mirror everything is a mirror our nature our animals plant life it doesn't matter what it is people even souls souls are mirrors everything is a mirror there is never a time that we are not being presented with the reflection of who we really are, who we truly are in the moment. Not the potential, but who we truly are. And yet, the potential is there too. So who we truly are and the potential are all presented to us at the same time in order for people, for souls, to use discernment. But because the discernment is so foreign, because we've gotten in the habit of following so-and-so says this is how you have a good life so-and-so says this is what you to do to have a good life this is why I said earlier I don't know if it was in, in the previous video that I'm not uploading where I said hey people are like hey I did everything right I did what they told me to do I went to school I got married I had kids I got a, I got a degree in something that I didn't really want but my parents wanted or some person online said this is the best degree to get I have a family member uh, who went to school for engineering. She's selling real estate. Okay, this is this is what I'm saying. It's like people do things thinking that it's the best thing to do based on what other people say, completely ignoring what their true desire is, and then they end up spending all that money on a degree that they're not going to use, but they're responsible and that's the penalty that is the consequence you invested in something that you were not really interested in and you you spent all this money and time and effort and now you still got to pay for it but you can't do anything with it it's the same thing with people who um shopaholics they believe that they're getting something beneficial in the moment 
But when they look at their house, they become hoarders because now they can't get rid of all the things that they have because all these things are are um, are used to remind them that oh, I can I can buy these things. I have this. I have that. But their happiness is not um, coming from those things ever. It won't. It can't. It can't. And the thing is. You can't take... I mean, people have said this before. You can't take it with you when you die. That's true. You can't take it with you when you die. And that's why people are so miserable and sad when they die. Because they never knew their worth. They never knew their value. They put their worth and their value in objects. This is why they worked so hard. That's why I said... Well, I said in yesterday's video that I'm not releasing, but... I said there are certain people who work hard and I'm not a believer in that. I don't believe in working hard. I believe if you work hard for something, you're going against your true soul condition. And when you when it's not when it's no longer available to you, that's when you're going to feel the pain. Because you worked so hard to have these things in order to feel good. And once they're removed, you don't, you no longer have them to feel good. This is why so many people, they, they fall into a spiral when they die. When they enter the spirit world or when they transition to the spirit world. Because everything that they were working for, everything that they had worked for, is gone. But they were using those things to prop themselves up in a way that they did not understand. They didn't know what the true worth and value or where the true worth and value resided in the soul. So they never worked on the soul. They only worked getting material things or manipulating others to give them what they wanted. There's great value in a manipulator because of the result. What are they getting out of it? There's great value in a manipulator. Great value. From the manipulator's perspective. Only. This is what I mean. From man's perspective. You'll see value in many things that are degrading. That are self-destructive. Or just destructive to other people as well. Understand if you're destructive to yourself. You're being destructive to someone else. There's a six minute slowdown on California 110 in two miles. You just said. Fool. Fine. <laughs> I swear it's that 110. There's. You know it's a faster route. <laughs> now it's a six minute slowdown. I'm glad he said okay, that was a universe right there. It got me in the nick of time. Nick of time. Because <laughs> I was about to go straight on to that one ten. Um <clears throat> so oh what was I saying? Um Oh yeah, the the you know, what someone sees as as value or valuable, we have, it, it's, it, I, I don't want to say, look, you gotta be, don't be so nervous. Um, which I know she can't help being nervous, she's just a nervous Nelly. <clears throat> so, when, when someone says, hey, you're doing great work, or hey, you're you're giving you're producing something that's that's of great value. You may be producing something of great value, but it just depends on what perspective is it coming from. Where is the value? Because you know, like I said, you know, we have to see everything from God's perspective. If we don't see it from God's perspective, we're going to have problems. We're going to have problems, people. There's no other way around this. If you are living life in any area that is not from God's perspective as being truthful or loving, we are going to have problems. If you interrupt someone's suffering, and I let me rephrase that. If you interrupt someone's self-created suffering, you will have a consequence to that if it is not coming from a place of love. It's never about the action. It's the intent behind the action. 
you can help someone get a job for two reasons. One, you are looking at them suffer and you want to stop their suffering. If that's the case, you're going to experience a consequence. And the person is not going to hold the job. They're not going to be able to keep the job. And so if you put your neck out for someone because you want to stop someone's pain and you're not concerned about anything else regarding their soul condition or, or God's truth, if you just want to give someone a job for your own reasons, which is to stop someone from um, uh, experiencing their pain and suffering or... So you can look like you have power and authority because some people do that. Oh, I can get you a job here. I'll put in a word for you. I can do that. Without understanding the intent, you will have a consequence. And what will end up happening is the person won't be able to maintain the job. They'll quit because they'll lose the job for the same reason why they either didn't have one before or lost one before. You can't break their cycle of karma. But if you do break their cycle of karma and it's done from an unloving place, well, guess what? You're going to pay the price. You're going to suffer a consequence. Why? Because it's the consequence for interrupting God's communication with that, with that soul. And God communicates via the law of attraction. All events come to a person to reveal something to that person to help that person out of the slump that they're in. But, if you go about it correctly, if you have a true desire to help someone and you also recognize the free will of another accepting that help and you understand that I can go only so far to help someone but the other person has to meet me halfway. I can lend out, I can reach out my hand. If you're drowning in your own pain and suffering. If you're drowning in your own pain and suffering, as if someone is drowning in the ocean, I can reach out my hand, but you also have to reach out your hand. You have to grab my hand, and we can do it together. But you have to put some energy into it too. You have to put some effort into it. It can't be, hey, stay right there. I'm going to come to you, jump in the water, help push you up from the water into the boat or onto the land, and you don't have to do anything. That is a consequence that you will have to experience because you are not allowing the other person to be self-sufficient. You are not allowing the other person to recognize their worth and their value. See, we recognize our worth and our value when we are able to see our own worth and our own value. This is why it's not good to do things for people, but allow people to do things for themselves. You can create a path for them to do it. If they are blind and they are clueless, you can create a path for them to walk. Say, hey, look, this is a path, but you have to walk it. You have to walk it. I can't carry you because there's consequences to that. And I'm not trying to have any consequences. <laughs> the only consequences I want to experience are the ones that uh, are from whatever I've done to myself. <laughs> you know, but I can't do it because of you. So we have to allow people to understand, to not just understand, but to see their worth so that they know their value. You know, but they have to participate in life. A person who is not participating in life, they're not going to be able to see anything. Well, they, they will be able to see something. The thing that they'll be able to see is that they are, con well, they, that they have been con contributing to their, um, their unhappiness. That's what they'll be able to see. But... They, they need to, you know, that people just need to be able to see it for themselves. You can't tell people that they're worthy and valuable because they aren't living their belief. They're living your belief. And we need to live our own belief. This is why people are so jacked up now because the way the planet, the, not the way the planet is set up, but the way man has set things up, its own system, we use other people. We don't really have 
desires of our own. We ask people what their desire is and then we carry it out. There are very few people who who actually live out their own desires. They'll, but these people tell like, hell no, I'm not doing that. That's not what I'm doing. That's what you want, but that's not what I want. That's what you want. That's not what I want. They'll tell you real quick. Nope. I'll tell you real quick. Nope. That's not what I want to do. Just the other day, the IT man at work, so at the location, the way our system is set up, we can't have a printer there because the network won't support it. The way the network is set up, it can't support a printer or a copy or anything like that. Um, so copier, yeah, if it was standalone, but the new copiers transmit data and we can print from the copier. So we can't have a setup like that and we can't even have an all-in-one printer like that. Um, so the old IT person said long ago, uh, but did we have a new IT person and uh, he said, hey, can you walk me down to the other location? I don't know where it is. I said, sure, I'll take you over there. So I took him over there. And I was as I was walking, I said, we walk over here all the time because uh, we don't have a printer. And so we have to walk to a different pr uh, building to print because blah, blah, blah. He goes, oh, he goes, yeah, he goes, just put in a he goes, put, he goes, no, he said, put in a request for like an all-in-one printer. Um, and I'm looking at him, I'm like, but I didn't ask for that. Like, I didn't ask for a printer, <laughs> you know? And so it's a desire that he has, but it's not a desire that I have. Number one, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I, first of all, I can, from past experience, dealing with this agency, I already know that's not a good idea. We've had the, that situation where everyone had their own printer and the cost of print cartridges was too high. And then at one point, they removed all of them. They took them out of everybody's office. They're like, nope, you can't have individual printers. It's, it costs too much money to keep replacing these ink cartridges. And so they took them away. Now, I've been there long enough to see this. He hasn't. So I'm you're not going to put me on the radar because <laughs> I know better. Now, if you want to do it, you do it. But you're going to have to answer to someone as to why you did it when... The norm is not doing it, and they have a reason why they're not doing it. That's why they have these copiers, and that's why they have us walking down, you know, a, you know, down at the end of the block to print some stuff out. <laughs> they know that we're doing this, like the, the, all the way up to the top. They know that we're doing this. So, but he doesn't know. So I can't do what you want me to do because I know that's not good for me. You know, I know, I know better. You're not gonna have me ask something, and I already know the answer to it. Or I know the consequence to it. You know, but if the universe deems that I'm supposed to have whatever he's suggesting, that it'll happen. But it's not going to happen for me. It's, it's Like I said, I'm not going to work hard and put in all this work and effort for something. I'm just going to allow it to come. And right now, I'm okay with not having it. And because I'm okay with not having it, it will probably come without me even having to do anything for it. Because that's the way the universe works. When you want something really bad, you have to work hard to get it because it's not coming to you. But I'm okay with not having it. But my point is, I'm not doing something because someone, has, someone else said to. I'm not doing something because someone has a desire and they need me to execute it. If you really look at it, if he wanted me to have one, then he would put in a request for it, right? If he really truly wanted me to have this thing in this building or have this thing in this building, don't you think being the IT person he would put in a request and would say, hey, look, this is what, um, this is what, you know, I feel as an IT person this building needs in order for uh, people to work efficiently. That's not hard. That's not hard to do at all. But I know the history. <laughs> I know, I know the history. I already know what's gonna happen. So what does, it, I would be foolish to go against what I already know when I already know what the end result is going to be, that'd be foolish. Foolish, foolish, foolish. That'd be a waste of time. Just a waste of time. Time, 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 time. <laughs> oh, that coffee is hot. Um, <clears throat> that looks a little, a little convoluted up there. Um, <clears throat> So value, worth. Oh, so what I was uh, going to say is, if you have been raised where you have felt, oh, going all the way back to conception. If your parents felt as if they didn't have any worth, 
it's not going to be transferred to you. Meaning worth is not going to, worthiness is not going to be transferred to you. The only time that can happen is if God imbued something within your soul that doesn't allow you to be affected in that way. Because understand, every soul is different. God creates souls in a way where each one of them is unique. Each one has a, a, a varying degree of different things. Personality and characteristics. Some are just naturally more understanding. Some people just naturally see things. I'm one of these people. And that's why I had to recognize what, what my personality is. Like what, what gifts did or personality traits did the creator give me that allows me to be different than most people? Why can, because some people have these gifts. They have these abilities where they can see things clearly. And that is our positive contribution to society. That is our positive contribution to the universe. That is our positive contribution to our brothers and sisters. All these people on the freeway are my brothers and sisters and your brothers and sisters. That's my positive contribution to the whole. That's the positive contribution to myself. But there are some people who are artistic. My soulmate is extremely artistic. Extremely. I mean creative. And I say beyond, you know, one, beyond myself. I'm not a creative person like that. I can't just think of things that this person thinks of. But I am the most logical out of both of us. I can see things clearly. And so, you know, it, it is the yin to the yang. You know, it's like I can see all the places where I excel and I can see all the places where my soulmate excels, but that's, it's supposed to be like that because as a whole, as a whole soul, I am both creative and logical. As a whole soul, there is no separation. We have to see it like that because the soul is a whole. It isn't until we incarnate that we are divided in half. Like an apple. But once we come together, I am he and he is I. We are we. <laughs> so when I look at that, I'm like, hell yeah, I'm creative. I'm super duper creative. I'm so creative. I'm like, wow. I wow myself. Unknowingly, I wow myself. Look, bitch, don't try it. Don't don't bitch, don't try it. Don't try it. Okay? I still have degradation in my soul. I cuss you out. <laughs> okay, I'm kidding, but whatever. Crazy woman. I'll be angry too. I'll be angry too. If you look at her, you would understand why she's angry. <laughs> well, hopefully her soulmate is living her best life somewhere else while this one over here is living in misery. But anyway, um, yeah, back to, uh, you know, if you want... Oh, what I was saying is that, um, you know, this this thing, this topic of worthiness and value, if your parents didn't have that, you're not going to have it most likely. And that leaves you open to treatment um, that will sustain that. Will not only sustain it, but uh, deepen the, um, development of that, of that unworthiness and lack of value. And I see this in people that I, you know, that I know, um, where they had troubled parents and because the parents were troubled, it was passed on to them as children, uh, to their children, to my, the people that I know. Uh, and also at the same time, the parents' behavior, because of the degradation, because of the lack of worthiness and lack of value, they weren't able to share that. They weren't able to share worthiness, and they weren't uh, able to um, operate from the from a place of parenting in a way that would build uh, and sustain worthiness and value. So they didn't. They couldn't even do it. Not only did they, you know, transfer all the crap to them. They had to treat their children like crap. Like that was the only thing that they had to do because they didn't know how to work on themselves. They didn't know this stuff was going on. They just knew that they were just miserable people. They just, and not even that. I can't even say they knew they were miserable. They felt their misery. They, they felt their pain. They felt their suffering. 
But they didn't identify it as that. They just know that they were just fucking mad all the time. And they didn't know why they were mad. They just knew that they were mad. You know? Um, and I couldn't, like I said, I can't even say that they were aware of that because some people live in anger and they don't know that they're angry. Like, I'm, I work with a person who's just miserable, this angry, miserable, angry person, and they don't know. They're not aware of it. They just mad. And that's just their way of life. That's just the way of being. And so you don't know that you're treating people unlovingly because of the degradation that's within your being. And so what my point is, sometimes it starts before you even had a chance to recognize that it was something that was happening to you. And sometimes when we don't, we, we, we know that we feel bad when things happen to us, like when mom or dad do something or our brothers and sisters do something or grandparents do something that hurt us in the moment. We know that we have experiences, but... Because the experiences are like that every day, all the time, we don't understand that there's something different. We don't understand that there's something off. We know that it's painful. We know we don't like it, but we don't understand exactly what's going on. And so this this worth, uh, lack of worth and lack of value is, has been instilled from, like I said, conception. And it has been uh, groomed since conception or you have been groomed since conception to feel unworthy and have a lack of a feeling of a lack of value. So it's 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 difficult it's, so what I'm doing is I'm acknowledging that yes there are people out there who who experience this and it's very difficult to get out of it. And so my words to you are these. Try to stop using other people to lift you up. Try to stop doing that. You have to know at some point the truth. Know the truth. The truth that you have great value because you are extremely worthy. And it's not because I say so. It's because God says so. It's because the creator says so. Once you align yourself with that truth, then you can see the truth of the, wor of the words that I speak. But until then, you can't. You won't be able to. If you listen to what I'm saying in this moment, and you're saying, wow, thanks, Zach. Wow, you know, I never saw it that way. And um, I, I'm gonna, I can see my value in this moment. I'm going to continue this. It's not going to work. Because my words are no different than anybody else's. My words cannot sustain you. Again, like I said, there's like some bosses and, you know, I, I used to do workplace a, a lot because that's generally where people get the most praise. So, you know, or lack thereof. But, you know, when you, when, an, when a human being praises you, uh, and, and and says you are worthy and you're value and you're doing a good and you're valuable and you're doing a good job. It's still coming from a human being. So even though I am saying it, I'm still a human being, just like anybody else. And so my words cannot sustain you because they are not God's words. They're my words. Now I'm speaking God's truth, but you have to understand that it's God's truth because God's truth is what's sustaining coming from me they're just words coming from Zachary but I understand that these are God's truths which allow me to hold on to these words which allows these words to sustain me which allow the knowing to sustain me which allows the understanding to sustain me because I understand that it's from the perspective of the creator it's not from my perspective it's not from AJ's perspective AJ's perspective or Jesus's perspective or anybody else's perspective is their perspective but when someone shares the truth of the creator, it is the truth of the creator. I'm just sharing the truth of the creator. But you have to believe in the truth of the creator in order for it to sustain you. If you see it as just something that I say, it's just something that I say. Do you see what I'm saying? I could never, ever have the power of the creator. You are like, I can't be the intermediary for, for, for God. I can't, I'm, I'm not that. I'm not able to be that. All I can do is recognize God's truth, share God's truth, and hopefully you'll see it as God's truth and accept it as God's truth and live it as God's truth. But you can't see it as my truth. 
You can't see any of God's truth as my truth because if you do that, it will never be God's truth. It will only be my truth. Does that, I, I know that makes sense. I Well, I know that makes sense. I don't know if it makes sense to some of you. I think it makes sense to some of you. Well, I know it makes sense to some of you, but it may not make sense to all of you. <laughs> you know? Um, that's what, like, I can't... Even Jesus has said it, you know? I can't take credit for the truth because it's not... He says it's not my truth. It's just the truth. It's God's truth. That's why I like this so much because it's not about my opinion. It's about absolute truth. God's truth. That's all it is. I'm just sharing it. I'm just sharing it. That's all I'm doing. Because I've realized it. And so now that I've realized it and I know the impact that it can make, the positive impact that it can make, I put it out there so that it can possibly make it a, a, possi a, a positive impact on someone else. Meaning, hope. In, in uh, There's a possibility that someone will accept it as it is and allow it to have a positive impact upon them. But you have to see it as God's truth. That's the only way it's going to be sustained. I can't sustain anything. I don't have the power to sustain something that isn't mine. <laughs> it's not mine. I can't. I, I can't. I can tell you a lie and I would then be the only one to sustain that I would have to continue with that lie but that won't even last for long because it's a lie and this is a universe of truth anyway that's all I that's all I, I think I got for now so uh, yeah I hope you guys have a great uh, Wednesday um, seems like a long week for some reason um, but I don't know I'm going to a, a concert it's my my first candlelight concert uh, it's uh, in um, in recognition of Black History Month so they have they're recognizing black com there's black violinists who are recognizing black Af or black or African American uh, classical composers uh, and it's being done in this church well they have different venues but this one is in a church and it's done by candlelight there's no regular there's no artificial light there's no lamps or anything like that just candles all around the um, the 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 musicians people are playing the music and um, and composers as well and uh, it's my first one I've never been to one before and I'm, I'm actually going by myself and I thought about inviting someone but there was an uneasiness about that idea and uh, so I'm going by myself and I'm looking forward to it because I want to experience it. You know, I don't want anybody's opinion. I don't want anything like that. Just have a good time with Zachary, you know. All right, everybody. You guys have a good one. I'll talk to you guys later. All right. Bye now.